بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which will be the grammar uh, lesson for today but before that let's uh, revise what we previously took the articles about hotels and uh, traveling which is the main theme of this uh, unit we talked about the ca uh, the capsule hotels the undersea hotel the hotel the igloo hotel let's call it the igloo hotel because it's igloo shaped and the hotel above the trees in uh, brazil so we were talking about hotels then uh, we discussed this question or answer this question together to that you're designing your own unusual hotel that you set your imagination free and come up with uh, with the unique uh, hotel ideas, brainstorm it maybe with your friends. And I came up with these ideas, water slide, uh, cinema, uh, library, football pitch. And I uh, told you that these questions will help you uh, maybe in this task. For example, the question here, where is the hotel? How large is it? What attractions does it have? What makes it the hotel? What makes it unique? And we answered these together. Maybe your answers uh, differ than mine. So it's okay. So let's jump to today's lesson. These are the lesson objectives here. Classify the adverbs according to their degree. So we'll be studying about adverbs. Rewrite sentences using adverbs of degree. Uh, indicate an attitude with sentence adverbs. Uh, use sentence adverbs correctly. Use adverbs of degree with adjectives. Use adverbs of degree with adverbs. Use enough, the word enough, with adverbs of degree. Use uh, sentence adverbs with simple tenses. And we use sentence adverbs with compound verbs. So we'll be talking a lot of uh, adverbs and the adverbs of degree today. So this is today's lesson grammar, as I said before. Adverbs of degree. So let's begin. Adverbs of degree tell us about the intensity of a verb, adjective, or other adverbs. Again, adverbs of degree tell us about the intensity, the intensity of the verb, adjective, or other adverbs. Some common adverbs of degree are absolutely, almost, barely, completely, enough, extremely, hardly, just, nearly, quite, rather, scarcely, so, too, and very. So these are some examples or some the common uh, adverbs of degree. Uh, and again, the adverbs of degree shows the intensity of a verb or an adjective. For example, when you say uh, this house is big, this is an adjective, big. But when you, when you want to intensify it, the house is very big. So the adverbs of degree shows us the intensity that it's the house is big or is it very big or is it too big? So we'll be studying that today. The adverbs of degree usually go before the main verb they modify. You put it before the main verb that it modifies. I've almost finished packing. I've almost finished packing. Am I finished packing? No, I'm almost. Just give me one minute. I've almost finished packing. I nearly missed my flight. I nearly missed my flight. So you can see here the main verb finished and missed. We put the adverb of degree before the main verb. I nearly missed my flight. Did I miss it? No, I just nearly uh, missed my flight. Again here, the adverbs of degree usually go before the adjective or adverb they modify. So if you're talking about an adjective or an adverb, just like the main verb, we put it before it. Again, uh, the adverbs of degree usually go before the adjectives or the adverb that it modifies. The travel agent was extremely helpful. The travel agent, uh, the employee there, he was extremely helpful. He did many things to, uh, for me. Uh, the travel agent was extremely helpful. If he did one or two things, I would say 
he was helpful. I want to thank him. But when I say he was extremely helpful, it means that he did uh, too many things to me. He made it easier for me. He read the map very carefully. He read the map, uh, he read the map uh, very carefully. So he paid attention to details. He read the map step by step, location by location. So he was thorough in his reading to the map very carefully. And if you see here, extremely and very, go, uh, they goes before, it goes before the adjective or the adverb, extremely helpful, very carefully. When enough is used as an adverb of degree, it is placed after adjectives and adverbs. When you want to use enough as an adverb of degree, you put it after the adjective or the adverb, after the adjective or the adverb, not the verb. For example, here, is your coffee hot enough? Is your coffee hot enough? You are not speaking loudly enough. Let's take the first example. Is your coffee hot enough? The coffee is hot. For example, you will go to a cafe and uh, the bartender there gives you the uh, coffee and he asks you, is it hot enough? It's hot, but is it half, uh, hot enough for you? Maybe you want it to be extra hot. Is it hot enough? Yes or no? Uh, the other example here, you're not speaking loudly enough. You're not speaking loudly enough. For example, you are at a meeting are you at, and you are at the end of the table and you tell the instructor, excuse me, you're not speaking loudly enough. I can't hear you. You are speaking loudly, okay? But it's not loudly enough. I can't hear you at the end of the table. And pay attention that the word enough comes after the adjective or the adverb. If it is used as an adverb of degree. So what is the difference between to and very? We know that they both are intensifiers. When you say uh, that, uh, for uh, another example, uh, the car is expensive. This is an adjective, expensive. So what's the, the difference when you say the car is very expensive or the car is too expensive? They both do the same thing. They intensify the adjective expensive, but there's a slight difference between them. Very simply means extremely. Two means more than is necessary or desirable. For example, the hotel is very expensive, but we're going to stay there. So when you say something is very expensive, it's very expensive, but I can buy it. I can book the hotel. I know it's very expensive. It's extremely expensive, but I can manage. I have the money to go there. But when you say the hotel is too expensive, we can't stay there. When you say the car or the hotel is too expensive, it means I can't pay the money that they want. It's too expensive for me. It's too expensive for me. For example, when you want to go to a restaurant before it closes at night, when, they say, when you say I was uh, very late, it means you were late, but you made it. At least you made it. When you say I was too late, it means that you arrived to the restaurant while it was closed, while it was closed. So this is the difference between very and too. Of course, you know now that too is a little bit stronger, more intensified than, uh, than very. Sentence adverbs. Sentence adverbs. Sentence adverbs modify an entire sentence, an entire sentence or a whole clause within a sentence. Again, from the word sentence, it deals with sentences. Sentence adverbs modify an entire sentence or a whole clause within a sentence. They indicate the attitude of the speaker. Some common sentence adverbs are uh, actually, certainly, uh, frankly, obviously, probably, uh, admittedly, clearly, honestly, officially, undoubtedly, apparently, evidently, naturally, presumably, fortunately, or unfortunately. These are the sentence of adverbs. Let's read it again. Sentence adverbs modify an entire sentence, not just one word or two, the entire sentence or the whole clause within 
uh, within a sentence, they indicate the attitude of the speaker. So they are related to the attitude of the speaker, the person who is uh, saying it. Sentence adverbs, the one that had the marks on it, some sentences, some sentence adverbs usually go at the beginning of a sentence. Some of them, the word that uh, had this mark on them, the star mark here, some sentence adverbs usually go at the beginning of a sentence. For example here, frankly, I'm disappointed in the quality of this hotel. You can begin the sentence with the uh, sentence adverb here, frankly. When, for example, when you say, honestly, I don't think that he is good. You're being honest here. This describes your attitude. So adverbs, uh, sentence adverbs are related to the speaker's attitude, as I mentioned earlier. Frankly, I'm disappointed in the quality of this hotel. Other sentence adverbs can go after the verb be before simple, tense, uh, before simple tenses of other verbs or after the auxiliary in a compound verb. Again, other sentence adverbs can go before the verb be, before simple tenses of other verbs or, the auxiliary, or after the auxiliary verb in a compound verb. Let's take some examples here. You are obviously having a good time. You are obviously having a good time. You can say you're having a good time, but when you add the uh, sentence adverb here, obviously it gives more meaning, it, gives, uh, it can explain your attitude more, obviously, something that is very obvious to the speaker here. You're obviously having a good time. He certainly spent a lot of money on this trip. He certainly spent a lot of money on uh, this trip. Certainly, it means something that you are sure about, you are certain about. You say it like this. He certainly spent a lot of money on this trip. When you know someone is coming, you say, I know him. He is certainly coming. The flight has undoubtedly left by now. The flight has undoubtedly left by now. Undoubtedly, it means without a doubt. Without a doubt, something that you are sure about. For example, this flight here, uh, it was scheduled to leave at uh, 3 p.m. and now it's 3.30. So now you are very sure that it has left. So that's why we say here, the flight has undoubtedly, without a doubt, I don't have any doubts that the, uh, by now the flight has left. Find more examples in the articles on page 34 and 35. If you remember the articles that we took uh, before regarding the hotels, let's now uh, read them together. Let's get back to them together and, fry, and try to find more examples there. So let's listen to them again. Let's listen to them again and try to find one or two examples in each. Let's listen. Jules Undersea Lodge. Florida, USA undoubtedly, most people have never been to a hotel like Jules Undersea Lodge before. This extremely unusual hotel, located in Key Largo, Florida, is on the ocean floor. Guests scuba dive to the hotel's one unit, which is over 19 feet, 6 meters, below the surface. The unit includes two bedrooms, a television, and 50-inch, 127-centimeter, circular windows that offer views of passing sea life. So this is the first article here. Can you give me an example? Yes, it's the first word here. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, again, as I mentioned before, it means without a doubt. Most people have never been to a hotel like Jules. It means that you are very sure, very certain of something when you say undoubtedly. He's very sure that people has never been to a hotel under the sea. The other article here, uh, let's listen to it. Arai ao Amazon Towers Hotel Manaus, Brazil. Arai ao Amazon Towers Hotel in Manaus, Brazil, is the world's largest commercial tree house. Amazingly, Arai ao's towers are built at the level of the rainforest treetops, about 72 feet, 22 meters, in the air. 
The towers are linked together by four miles, six kilometers, of wooden catwalks. This very unusual setting gives guests the unique opportunity to experience the plant and animal life of the rainforest canopy while leaving the rainforest's ecosystem undisturbed. So, where is the example in this article here? Yes, very good. Amazingly. Amazingly, it means from the word itself that is something amazing. You are amazed by what you have seen. Amazingly, Arias Towers are built at the level of the rainforest treetops. So he was amazed that the hotel is above the trees. The last article here, the one in Finland, let's listen to it and try to find the example. The Kaxlautenen Hotel Lapland, Finland. In the heart of Finnish Lapland, 155 miles, 250 kilometers, north of the Arctic Circle, lies a truly magical place. The Kaxlautenen Hotel offers guests the opportunity to stay overnight in either a snow or glass igloo. Those who choose the glass igloos can enjoy the night skies and the stunning northern lights from the comfort of their own bed. Luckily, the hotel provides cozy, extra warm sleeping bags for the guests who choose to sleep in snow igloos. So in this article here, can you search for the example here? Okay, let's find it together. It's the word luckily, luckily. From the word luck, luckily, fortunately, uh, here, luckily, the hotel provides cozy, extra warm sleeping bags. If you want to sleep, of course, in the snow igloo. So, rewrite each sentence to include the adverb of degree. We have some sentences here, and we have to, uh, to add the adverb of degree. You can see the first one is already done for us. We have recovered from our trip, and we have to add the word uh, almost. So we have almost recovered from our trip. Number one, we ate anything on the airplane. And, the, uh, uh, and here the adverb of the degree, uh, hardly. We ate anything on uh, the airplane and we want to add the word hardly. Okay, let's check the answer. We hardly ate anything on the airplane so it comes before the verb we hardly ate anything on the airplane so hardly ate does it mean that we ate a lot or just ate a few things or did we eat at all yes that's correct we did eat but just eat little just ate a little we hardly ate maybe just one or two things we hardly ate anything on the airplane number two the food was bland for me the food was bland for me and the uh, adverb to and the adverb to yes this is an easy one of course the food was too bland for me the food was too bland for me number three the flight attendant dropped my meal on me the flight attendant when she was or he was bringing the meal dropped my meal on me and the adverb nearly and the adverb nearly yes very good the flight attendant nearly dropped it comes before the verb nearly dropped my meal on me so when nearly comes before the verb did the verb happen no very good it almost happened the flight attendant nearly dropped my meal on me uh, number four, sleeping on the train was uncomfortable. Sleeping on the, on the train was uncomfortable. And the verb rather. And the, the, uh, the adverb rather. So, yes, this is very obvious. We put it before the adjective here. Sleeping on the train was rather uncomfortable. Number five, we were exhausted by the end of our trip. And the adverb, absolutely. And the adverb, absolutely. We were exhausted by the end of our trip. You can search here for the adverb or the adjective, or maybe it's a verb. Yes, this is very obvious here. We were absolutely exhausted by the end of our trip. Absolutely, which is the equivalent of very exhausted. Absolutely. Uh, exhausted by the end of our trip. Number six, 
the airplane seat wasn't big for me. The airplane seat wasn't big for me. And the adverb enough. Remember enough, do we put it before or after the adjective or the adverb? Okay, let's check the answer. The airplane seat wasn't big enough for me. Here it came after the uh, adjective big. The airplane seat wasn't big enough for me. It wasn't big enough for me. Maybe it was a child seat, so it wasn't big enough for me. Very good. Complete the paragraph with the sentence adverbs from the box. Sometimes more than one answer is uh, possible. So we'll be talking about uh, Braj Mecca here. Actually, indeed, obviously, probably, however, interestingly, presumably, and surprisingly. We'll read it again. Actually, indeed, obviously, probably, however, interestingly, presumably and surprisingly. So let's fill uh, the gaps here with the uh, correct adverb from the box. Let's read together. Staying in the Braj al Bayt Hotel in Mecca, Saudi Arabia is an amazing experience. It is complex, a complex of seven skyscraper hotels. Seven sky, uh, skyscraper Hotels. The word skyscraper, it means uh, a very high building. It's a very high building. So number one, very good. Actually, actually, it's a complex of seven skyscrapers hotels. You use the, the adverb actually when, when you want to give a fact about uh, something. People think that is just one uh, skyscraper, a uh, Brazil Bait. No, it's uh, seven skyscrapers. Number two, the central hotel tower has the world's largest clock face. So number two is, very good, surprisingly, surprisingly, from the word itself, surprise, you are surprised here. Surprisingly, the central hotel tower has the world's largest clock face and three, the tallest tower in the complex is, number four, so let's get back to number three. And very good. Interestingly, the tallest tower in the complex is very good. Indeed, the tallest building in Saudi Arabia. So indeed, you say it when you are sure of something. Indeed, indeed, the tallest building in Saudi Arabia. With a height of uh, 601 meters, the hotel is very close to Islam's most sacred site, uh, the Great Mosque of Mecca. The hotel complex was, then here the, the fifth gap, built to accommodate pilgrims of the Hajj that uh, visit Mecca every year from all parts of the Muslim world. So number five, the hotel complex was obviously so something very obvious, everyone can see why. The hotel complex was obviously built to accommodate pilgrims of the Hajj that, uh, that visit Mecca every year from all parts of the Muslim world. And number six is, however, it also welcomes visitors to Mecca throughout the year. Even though the greatest, uh, concern, uh, the greatest concentration of visitors is most and number seven, during the Hajj. Again, even though the greatest concentration of visitors is most, number seven, pr probably during the Hajj. Probably it means that you are not 100% sure of something, so you say probably, most likely. The Abraj al Bayt has five story shopping mall and a parking garage capable of holding over a thousand vehicles. Number eight, for both for the visitors of the mall and for the hotel guests. So can you guess what number eight is? We have one remaining. Very good. And presumably both for uh, the visitors of the mall and for the hotel guests. Presumably when you say something that is presumably when you presume something that you are uh, assuming something, you, when you assume something, as we said before, that you think that 
this thing has uh, this job for it. I presume that the garage is for the visitors of the mall and the hotel because it's obvious in front of me both of the guests for the mall and the hotel park their car there. So I, I assume that the uh, garage is for both the mall visitors and the hotel uh, visitors. So presumably means assume. Number C here, read the following facts about another unusual hotel in another country. Then write a paragraph about it using adverbs of degree and sentence adverbs. The hotel is located on the uh, Tone River, 124 miles or 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. The hotel is the biggest igloo in the world. It melts, melts, melting when uh, water turns from ice into liquid. It melts into the river every spring and is recreated every winter. The temperature inside the hotel is 23 Fahrenheit or minus 5 Celsius. So you read the following facts, these facts, these four facts uh, about a hotel in another country and you have to write a paragraph about it using uh, the adverbs of degree and the sentence adverbs. As you can see the pictures here, uh, of course uh, the location 200 kilometers north the Arctic, it will be mostly ice and snow. And remember that the ice melts in the uh, winter. So why do you think people would want to stay in this hotel? These are some questions that uh, might or will help you uh, order your ideas, reorganize your ideas when you want to write the paragraph. The first question, why do you think people would want to stay in this hotel? Would you like to stay there, that you know the hotel is very cold, extremely cold, or is it going to be too cold for you? Would you like to stay there? What happens to the hotel every spring? What happens to the hotel every spring? Why do you think people would want to stay in this hotel? The hotel is the biggest igloo in the world, and it's also unique. It made, it's uh, made out of snow. It's interesting, very unique, and it's also the biggest igloo in the world. Would you like to stay there? Would you like to stay there? So this is, of course, is up to you. For me, I would say, yes, of course, I would like to try and stay there for a couple of days, maybe a week, if they gave me warm blankets, of course. What happens to the hotel every spring? If you remember the third point, every spring, what happens to the hotel, the whole hotel? that is made of ice. Very good. It melts into the river. Then later it's recreated again. So these might help you to write your paragraph. And with that, we reach to the end of the lesson. See you next, see you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.